From fights when I should have stood my ground. Lived a double life when nobody was around. Tattooed in my mind, images I can't take back. And dressed in all white when my soul was still black. Been sick to my stomach in the prison of regret. Felt so full of shame that I wish that I was dead. Until I realized that somebody paid the price. The gift was free for me, but he had to give his life. I'm thankful, but some days I'm Cain and then other days I'm Abel. The enemy reminds me of the times I'm unstable and how my flaws can never let me sit at your table. Now I'm sick to my stomach in a prison of regret. Feel so full of shame that I wish that I was dead. Till I realize that somebody paid the price. The gift was free for me, but he had to give his life. Jesus paid it all. Oh. 
was just thinking, thank God our God reigns because if I was trying to control my life, not go well. Thank the Lord that God reigns and he is the one on high. Hallelujah for that. Welcome to Regeneration Community Church. Happy Palm Sunday. Yes, just one week um, before Easter. And I thought it'd be a really good idea to um, read through one of Jesus's most popular sermons and is the Beatitudes. And he lists out all the people that are blessed. And so I'll go through them real quick. Bear with me. It's a little bit long, but bear with me. Jesus says this, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. And blessed are those who are hungry, who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. And I love this because it doesn't say, blessed are those who can preach well. And it doesn't say, blessed are those who can sing really loudly at church or those who come to church in every single event or those who read the Bible every single day, those who are unfailingly kind or you know, nice and seem like they have everything perfectly going on in their lives. But it says, blessed are those who are poor in spirit, who mourn, who are meek, who hunger and thirst, who are merciful, pure in heart, peacemakers, who are persecuted. And for those, or when people insult them. And God doesn't seek out those who can do things well for him. But God saves the one who are committed to him who are desperate and say, God, I am poor, I am meek, I need you, I hunger and I thirst. I am persecuted, people insult me, I need you. Because those are the people who are fully devoted to him. Those are the people who know that they cannot do life without him. They are intimately aware of their lack. Those are the people that Jesus saves. So I want our church to be in that position of humility this morning. Not to be shameful for not being this perfect Christian, but just to be honest and transparent and say, God, I need you. Let's pray together, church. God, as we remember the great sacrifice, the crucifixion, And the resurrection that we'll be commemorating this week, God, may we remember remember that we need you. There is no us without you. God, we are weak and we are meek and pure. We want to be pure. We hunger and we thirst for you, God. We are poor in spirit. Just thank you so much. May we respond to your saving through songs of worship this morning, God. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Savior say thy strength indeed is small child of weakness watch and pray find in me thine all in all oh say Jesus paid it all all to him I owe say had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. I 
Lord, I come, I confess, I'm bowing here, I find my rest. Without you, I fall apart, you're the one that guides my heart. church. Um, today we're actually going over evangelism. That was our prayer request. Uh, so read with me. For I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. Romans 1, 16. Uh, how, when, when I think of evangelism, I always think like, man, I'm not worthy enough to be you know, preaching the gospel. I'm not worthy enough to be sharing the gospel. I don't know what to do. I don't know my gospel or I don't know my Bible that well. I haven't read the whole thing. And I think the enemy always just immediately goes into my head and immediately I'm like, I can't do this. That's for someone else. Um, and I realized that as the past five years of being a Christian, that it doesn't mean you have to share like just the word to everyone, right? Sometimes it means sharing your experience with God, like your testimony. 
It means inviting them out to church. It means like, you know, inviting them out to young adult ministry or to life group. It means inviting them to a place where they can worship God and learn who God is. And it doesn't have to be you. And I think sometimes when I think of this, I always think like, oh, it's the pressure that I has to be me. I has to, I have to teach this person like everything. But that's <laughs> that's not what it is, right? Like sometimes you just have to plant that seed. Just plant that little seed and then someone else can water that seed and fertilize it, right? It doesn't always have to be you. So I just really challenge you guys today. If you guys feel like you guys aren't worthy enough, you guys feel like, oh, like I don't know anything. That has to be like the pastor's role to do that. You know, I can't do all that. Um, it can be you, <laughs> surprisingly or not. And um, and I've seen things happen, right? So I uh, just really challenge you guys today that if you guys have someone in your head that, oh, I should really invite this person out to church or you know, I really hope they could you know, learn who God is, um, invite them out to Easter, invite them out to young adult. Um, start, plant that seed, but it doesn't have to be you who's always the one who's fertilizing and growing that seed, right? So uh, pray with me um, and yeah. thankful for this Palm Sunday, Lord, to be able to worship you. Um, but Lord, for those of us who may be struggling in our faith, who those who may feel like we're not worthy enough to be sharing the gospel, who feel like we're not worthy enough to do this, to do that, Lord, uh, I just pray that you give us, uh, give us that courage and give us that hope that we're able to just plant that seed in someone's heart, to invite that one person that we know should be, uh, that we want, you know, to come to church, to be able to be in your presence, Lord. Bless you. <laughs> to be able to just um, just share in your glory with us, Lord. Um, just want to pray for all of us here that you really, really challenge us, but also encourage us and have us not be afraid when we do go share the gospel, Lord. Uh, we're just thankful for you. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Welcome. <laughs> Today we are, I think it's the four ways to give. Oh, no, it's welcome first. All right, <laughs> welcome. <laughs> if you're new, um, I don't. I think Adway's the only one new, but if you're new, welcome. There's donuts, kolaches, and stuff. Uh, we'll probably chase around with an iPad. Uh, but there's four ways to give. Uh, there is going to be the giving box online, text, and Venmo, and there's always a new building fund, which we're going to be moving out sometime this year. So that'll be exciting. Um, and then we have the Outback Zoomerang. This is Australian themed. Yeah, this is, this is for Vacation Bible School for VBS for the kids. So if you're interested, please come on April 7th after service. Uh, Alex is in the back. If you have questions or if you have issues, contact him. <laughs> if, if you don't like it, find him. Uh, so we are having Good Friday um, Firefall this upcoming Friday is going to be at PJ's house uh, on, at 7.30 p.m. So please come worship. Um, it'll be a good time and just really, yeah, just come worship. <laughs> so I think there's invitations. I don't know if there's more of these. Okay, there's more. Okay, yeah, there's more of these. So this is for uh, Easter for next Sunday at 10 a.m. Um, I think this is supposed to be given out to you to pass out to other people. Yeah, to those who are who want to invite to church or you know just anything. But it just has our uh, has this really cool design. I'm assuming Deborah made it. <laughs> and then it has a really nice uh, you know back, and it shows like where it is and what time it is. So for anyone, this is perfect for evangelism. Mm. <laughs> All right, and I think that should be it. All right, uh, I guess the question of the week is who are you going to invite to church this next Easter or tomorrow or next week, next week, next week, sorry.
Who are you going to invite to Easter next week? <laughs> Not tomorrow. No one's going to be here tomorrow. All right, good morning, Regent. That is a teaser to what's going to be happening this upcoming Sunday. So obviously, we're celebrating Easter Sunday, and it's going to be a great time where we get together, as uh, Ricky had mentioned. Uh, if you can invite someone new, because we're going to be doing uh, lunch will be provided for that day. Is it dark or just my eyes? Okay, uh, lunch will be provided for that day. Uh, it's going to be a it's going to be a to to chef Tony will be doing some special special meat for us. So. That's, that's going to be exciting. Uh, we're going to have a baptism um, of someone. I think you all know who she is, but uh, she'll be being baptized. And so it's just going to be a great Sunday to, for us to celebrate what God has been, been doing in our lives, hopefully, and your lives as well, and for us to just invite someone to experience what God is doing. So hopefully this coming Sunday, uh, maybe like Ricky was saying, someone that comes into your mind, maybe a coworker or someone that... Uh, I don't know, maybe uh, that God has placed upon your heart that you really want to invite. Uh, we really want to encourage you guys to invite that person and, and have them come out and celebrate together. Sounds good? <laughs> all right, all right. Why don't everyone, everyone's like zoning out already. <laughs> or what's going on, guys? <laughs> you guys are already going through that, like thinking about your life choices already and going like, why am I here right now? All right, good morning, Regen. My name is Che, and we're currently in this series called Freedom, and today we're going to talk specifically about freedom from people-pleasing. Freedom from people-pleasing. You're like, is there such a thing? Well, do you ever recall making a decision based upon what others were pushing you to do? Maybe it was like your first cigarette, maybe your first drink, of alcohol, that is, right? Maybe even drugs. Do you remember that peer pressure where someone will come up to you and they'll be like, hey, everybody's doing it, and then you're like, oh, they are? Oh, okay, then I guess I have to do it too. And you would do it because you know, maybe you respected the person that was doing it or you thought highly of them, that you thought they were cool, so you wanted to be cool too. And because of that, you made that poor decision into doing something that you didn't want to do, but you actually did. And when you did that, do you remember when you went back home to your parents? And the parents would be like, what a stupid decision you made. And they would say, well, if everyone's jumping off a cliff, will you be jumping off with them? Right? Wouldn't they, wouldn't they say something like that? And you're like, what kind of cliff? You know? <laughs> and then they would just like, you know, <laughs> they'll beat you. 
Well, this morning, the, the message about p- freedom from people pleasing, this message I believe will impact you, especially if you struggle with that desire to please others, or maybe you're the person that others are coming to, to please or to get your approval. And this morning, I really want to talk about this because I believe that we can have freedom from this. And I believe this is actually a real struggle. And especially as a believer of Jesus Christ, if you are a Christian, I believe that this actually is a sin that we don't really talk about, nor do we really address. So point number one, the problem with people pleasing. Well, I would, I would honestly say the very first thing that comes to my mind about problem of people pleasing is that you have really, really low self-esteem. You actually don't even know what you really want. And instead, you fear what other people will think about you. And you fear that maybe they won't accept you and you'll be rejected. And and you fear like you no longer will fit in. And instead, you feel like you're on the outcast and you're like, like, uh, like no one wants to be with you or no one wants to, to live or hang out with you. But imagine this, though. You're living your life, not your own life, but you're living a life for somebody else. Can you imagine that? Like you're living your life where you're actually not pleasing ultimately what we would think God, but you're pleasing the people that are around you that really don't have anything to do with you, but you don't want to disappoint them. So you have this feeling of guilt and shame and you feel this pressure. And every day you're instead of looking to God, you're actually looking to people and trying to satisfy them. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 25, it says this, fearing people is a dangerous trap. But trusting the Lord means safety. That fearing people, like fearing what people say or think of you or, or, what they, what, or the approval that you want from the other people is a dangerous trap because if you keep doing that, you're going to be trapped in their world and what they're wanting you to do rather than what God wants you to do and the type of life that you should be living. It's kind of like, this is a weird thought, but it's kind of like you're living your life. And, and the image that I thought, of, I thought of is like, you know, you know, people have tattoos, right? And I think, you know, tattoo is like an art thing. But imagine if you had like tattoos that didn't make any sense to anything that you're doing in life. And your whole body was like tattooed with like water, sugar, like it's a <laughs> peanut butter, you know, like shopping cart, cart. Like, all the themes are, like, grocery store products, right? (laughs) But you know what I mean? Like, it's your thought of, like, why would you do things in your life that doesn't have some sort of a common theme or some sort of a motive or a purpose or a vision for your life? You will never know who you are until you stand up for yourself. And many of us, we've never done that. And you will realize that your relationship with other people are very, very shallow. Because the moment you go deep with someone and you realize their thoughts are different from your thoughts, you're going to be like, oh, yeah, 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 I, I agree with you. But in your mind, you're like, no, you don't. And you never stand up for yourself. And you don't have healthy boundaries. And because of that, like I mentioned, you have low self-esteem. You're disappointing people and disappointing yourselves. You have problems with making even the simplest of decisions because you're thinking in your mind of somebody else's thoughts if they would approve of your decisions. Like you'll be thinking like, what does my mom want? What does my dad want? What does my best friend want? What does anybody want? And in that process, now you're stuck where you can't make any decisions for yourself. That's the problem with people pleasing. So point number two, what does God want me to please, or what does God want me to please people? What does God want me to do? To, to be, to, what, what does God want me to please? <laughs> Does God, I'm sorry, I always do this, right? I read one word wrong, and the whole sentence goes to like kaput. <laughs> Does God want me to please people? Okay, so on the flip side, some of you are thinking like, you know, Pastor Che, are you saying that I don't have to care about what other people think about? Does it mean that I don't, like, finally I'm free? Like, my spouse, what you, what you want and what you desire, God says, or Che said, no, <laughs> forget you, and I can walk away from you? Is that what I'm saying this morning? No, that's not what I'm saying. Meaning, yeah, there should be this desire to make people happy in your life, right? But like anything that's good, it can be taken to the extreme that makes it become really bad. Meaning anything that's good in your life, it can become bad, right? If you do it over the, over the top. For instance, like food. Think about this. Food, you need food. But all of us, you know this too, right, don't you? That if you eat too much, what ends up happening? You grow a tire around your waist, right? 
And then you have an extra spare whenever you get a flat tire, right? So meaning there are things that in your life that is good, but if you take it to the extreme, then it becomes very, very bad. And so with people around you, I'm not saying that you live with them and you're like, you're like, oh, and then you like curse at them and you're like, yeah, I don't have to please you guys. I can say whatever I want up here. No, that's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is if it becomes your idol, if it becomes your God, it becomes your everything to make someone else happy, then now you're in this wrong direction where now that's your everything, right? And what, what does God want me to please people? In a sense where yes and no, right? Not where they become your God, that God will still be God, but then you can still make people happy. You could do things for them. Don't get me wrong. You can even serve them. You can love them, right? You can honor them, but not to the point where they become everything to you, where you want their praise, where you want their approval. John chapter 5, verse 44, it says this, you try to get praise from each other, but you do not try to get the praise that comes from the only God. So how can you believe? <laughs> that we're trying to get praises from each other. Like, people pleasing is like this desire that you are wanting their praises, and you don't care about the praises that you should really care about, but you're actually caring about the praises because now then everyone around you, they become like a little God in your life. And now they're controlling everything in your life without even them saying anything at all. So number one, I would say that people pleasing, it actually leads us to sin. It leads us to sin because we're pulling ourselves away from God and now we're going towards you guys becoming my little gods. And whoever you have in your life, guys, if you're a people pleaser, I, I promise you, you don't, you don't only have one person that you want to please in your life. You actually please multiple people in your life. There are multiple people that in your mind you're thinking like, ah, oh, if I can just get their approval, if I can get their praise, man, my life will feel good. I'll feel for good for that day and then, and then you'll be okay. But then the very next day again, you're like, okay, well, I have more people now I gotta start to feel like I have to please. And what happens is that you start compromising. You're making decisions based upon the people rather than making decisions based upon, again, maybe what God would want you to do. And ultimately, people-pleasing, it leads you from living a life for God. Where the purpose of your life now is not that you're living for a divine, like, a vision in your life, but now you're living your life where you're trying to make everyone around you happy. And I'm telling you right now, if you do that, it'll just be exhausting. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4 says this, But just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with a gospel... So we speak not to please man, but to please God who tests our hearts, right? And, uh, and Ricky just said, said as we were praying about evangelism, that God has entrusted us with the gospels for us to go around and share the gospel so that in that, that will please God. We're not doing that to please man. And that has never been God's heart for us. That do you understand that whenever we do the work that God has called us to do, that's the God, that's, when you think about the work that we do for God and when we do work for God, that's when you actually become very, very attractive. You know, I, I may have said this before, like if you look at like Josh and, and Deborah up here, like, you know, when you see them worshiping God, they look very, very attractive. And you're like, no, they don't. But they do. Why? There's something about when people worship or when people serve God, there's something about that that makes them look very, very attractive. I don't know what it is. It isn't the lights, it isn't the guitar, it isn't the, the clothes that they wear, right? You know, praise, praise leaders are not untouchable, right? <laughs> <laughs> but when you see them and then you see them worshiping God, something about them, it just, they just glow. And then you're like, wow, they used to be ugly on the off stage, but, <laughs> but they look so amazingly beautiful on stage. But that's true for anybody. Like when you see people serving, like even on the mission field, even when you go to a soup kitchen, even if you're serving kids here, right, and, and serving the youth, when you see them, when you see these people here serving, you're like, man, they're so awesome. They look so good. Right? Even the people in the back in the ops as like Tony's yawning away, like, you know, they look amazing too, right? <laughs> right? 
Like when he's sleeping in the back, he looks so peaceful. He looks so beautiful. He's like a baby. It's like amazing. <laughs> when you serve God and you're not trying to please people, I promise you, you look amazing. And that's what God is saying. God is saying that you were entrusted and you were created to praise God. You were designed for this purpose. But when you do it, when you go outside of that design, it doesn't look right. You look off. And I promise you guys, there are people in, even in this room right now, I'm thinking right now in my mind, there are people even in this room that will look so much more like beautiful when they're praising God compared to when they are not. Because that's why God created us. God created us to worship him, to serve him. And then when we, when we match up, that, when we match up it, just, it just looks amazing. That's why, again, again, praise leaders up here, it just looks, they look great. And it isn't, like I said, anything here. It's just the fact that their hearts are just worshiping God. And you see that. And you're like amazed by it. The whole Psalms chapter 150 is about praising the Lord. Can I read that, with you? read that for you guys? It says this. Praise the Lord. Praise him in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty expanse. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with trumpet sounds. Praise him with harp and lyre. Praise him with the tambourine and dancing. Praise him with stringed instruments and flute. Praise him with loud cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Everything that has breath shall praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That the psalmist is saying for all of us that we were meant to not serve man in the sense that we want to please him or get praises from man, but we were created that we will praise God. And when we praise God, that, that is the, the purpose of why we were created. Because he's our creator, and we want to give him the praise. But instead, we get trapped in this world of people pleasing, and the things that we do are not with the purpose and a vision, but rather we do it for the purpose of maybe us feeling a little low in our, uh, in the, a little low of who we are, so that we can feel a little bit better, like a morsel of like sugar so that we can feel a little bit better with that sugar, but then in actuality, it doesn't give us anything at all. So point number three, how to free, how to be free from people pleasing. How to be free from people pleasing. Do you realize that, uh, if you believe this, like knowledge, when you receive knowledge and you put them into action, it's power, correct? But if you have knowledge and you don't put it into action, what is it? It's nothing. It's, it's actually nothing, right? So with that being said, I want to hit you with some knowledge where hopefully this will give you some power if you place it into action. Okay, point number one I would say is that we cannot be like God. Okay, none of us are God. Maybe some of us we think we are, but we're not God. So when I say that, do you realize that God doesn't people please? Let me, let me be more even more specific. God cannot people please. There are certain things that God cannot do. And I know you're thinking that's anti, like that doesn't make any sense. But there are certain things in your, there's certain things that God cannot do. Right? God cannot not love you, if that makes sense. Meaning that God will always love us. He can't, he'll not stop loving us, right? He can't do that. So think about this. Even God cannot please people. So then why do we try to please people? Perfect case in point. Have you ever watched like a boxing match or like maybe a UFC and you know each fighter goes to their side or goes to their corner, right? What do they usually do typically? Sometimes you see this, right? They'll do this. They'll be like, oh. and they go, let's go, right? What are they doing? And have you seen it where they both will pray in their corners or on their side and then they'll be like, let's fight. And then like go and they fight, right? <laughs> I mean, think about that. I'm, I mean, if, if you were God and you saw that situation, you're like, I can't please them all. You know, I'm going to have to choose one of them to win, right? And that's it. That's the end of it. Even God, I'm saying, cannot people please, meaning answer both prayers, right? Because it's going to be one or the other. 
And I think it's so hilarious when I watched, I, back in the days, I remember watching UFC, and I think this guy's name was, name was Coleman, and I think he, not I think, he was a Christian, because at the end of the fight interview, like, like, you know, he's all bloody, the other person that he fought is, like, even more bloody, obviously, and then, you know, they say, like, interviewing him, and he's like, I'd like to thank Jesus Christ, because without him, I couldn't do this, and I'm thinking to myself, is that really what God wanted you to do? Is like beat up the guy over there and you're all beating up and, and you're thanking God for this? But anyways, but the point of this story I'm saying is that even God can't please people. Like he cannot please everyone because if everyone wanted something to be done, like every single one of our prayers be answered, imagine what our lives will be like. We would have like an immense amount of like gluttony and whatever you want to eat and I mean, I mean, like all these different things that you would want because you're thinking God's going to answer every single prayer that you have. And I'm telling you right now, God cannot people please himself. So why do we think somehow we can people please others? We're not God. The other thing I want you guys to realize with this knowledge is that, hey, guys, the, the moment you realize like other people's opinions about yourself, it's not really valuable, is it? Is what other people think about you, is it really valuable to you? Meaning like if, if one day like your best friend, like whatever they think of you, like they're thinking like, hey, you did something great and you're like, oh yeah, yeah, I did and, and I, I feel great about myself and they, they give you an approval, then what do you think the next, I don't know, even the next year, do you think you will remember that moment? Do you think you'll find value in the fact that, oh, my friend or the person that I really wanted to please, they will remember what I did? No, they're not going to remember it. Meaning everything in your past. Okay, so let me give you a more realistic uh, understanding. Do you remember growing up in high school what was really important to you? What was important to you in high school? Who, who liked you? Or no, no, let's, let's take a step back. What you wore. Think about what you, what you wore in high school. And, you know, fashion. You know, like, when I, when I, when, okay, so the, some of us that are older, right, like, when we were older people, like, our hairstyles, right, even, like, women back in the 1980s, right, I don't know if you guys know this, but 1980s, they had this hairspray called Aquanet, right, <laughs> and this Aquanet hairspray was just, it would, it would just like, keep on shh, right, and so the, back in the 1980s, their style of hair was they would want to, for women, they would want to make this hairstyle on the front make a huge wave. It would go up here. <laughs> and the only way you can keep it up was by getting Aquanet hairspray, and you would do this comb like this, and you would do like, <laughs> for like a good like 20 seconds, right? And then you would do this, and then, then, and then this is the best part of like the 1980s. You would go to this place called like a, a photo, photo booth place, right? And then you would go and then you would go hang out with your, your best girlfriends and the guys, right? And, and the, the backdrop would always have, so have like stars and like different galaxies, right, in the background. <laughs> and then you would like hold each other like kind of like this in a weird way, right? <laughs> and you would do that head tilt, right? And then you would get these pictures and you would hand them out to other people at school. <laughs> Do you guys still have those pictures? <laughs> Do you still hold them like as a treasure? Do you value them? No, you don't. If you do, if you do, please bring it to us. We wanna, we wanna have a good laugh. Please, I would, I would love to, you know. And that's the same thing with even me. Like I told you guys, my days was like, it's coming back by the way, but my hair was like, like front hair was just like straight long and it passed my chin and it'll be yellow. Cause I was a yellow fellow, right? And the rest of it, rest of it will be shaved here. Like, it will just be shaved. And I'll just flick it back. It lo I look like a weird Shaolin monk, right? And then that was my style of my hair. And if you, sh if you, if you, found, a if you found a photo like that, I would just, I would die. I would just be like, I'm so embarrassed, right? Because I was like, why did I do that? I don't know why I did that. Because it was cool. Yeah, everyone thought it was cool, so we all did it, right? You put sun in in the beginning, tch, 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 right? Everyone's sun in. Old people know what sun it is. You spray it, you go out into the sun, it becomes a little brown. You're like, oh, it's cool. But you're like, no, I need it more. And so you're like, you go to a hair salon and you go underneath this like, thing and then for like three hours and then you become blonde. It's the worst experience ever. I'm saying all of those things that you may think you valued even in high school, does it matter today? No, because it doesn't. And if you think about people pleasing, 
That's exactly what it is. The values of opinions of other people, after a period of time, when it passes by, it means absolutely nothing. But for some reason, it feels like it's the everything in your life. And you feel like that's what I have to do. And I'm telling you right now, you can live without people pleasing. But one thing I would love for us to understand is that God's desire for you to do is be free from being people pleasers. And what does it mean? Exodus chapter 20, guys. This is why the Ten Commandments is so good. So good, right? Watch. Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 through 6. The Ten Commandments starts here. If you ever wanted to know where the Ten Commandments were in the Bible, it's in Exodus chapter 20. It says this, and God spoke these words saying, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. So let me stop right there. God is telling the people of Israel, you were once slaves when you were in the land of Egypt. When you lived in Egypt, you were slaver, you were slaves, like physical slaves. You didn't have any freedom at all. And what God is trying to explain to them is that, hey, don't go back into your life of slavery. Since I'm bringing, bringing you out and being, bringing you, or giving you freedom, don't now chain, not yourself physically, but don't chain your, your mind and your life in slavery once again. And so that's why he reminds them in verse two, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, which represented the house of slavery. Verse three, you shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourselves a carved image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is on the earth beneath or that it is in the water under the, under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. Visiting, check this out. I, this is the part that's heavy actually. Visiting the iniquities of the fathers of the children to the third and the fourth generations of those who hate Hate me, hate me, but showing steadfast love to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. Guys, there's a lot to unpack in this, right? But understand the, 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 the background to this story. Like Moses is now getting these words from God, the Ten Commandments. He's getting it on an old-fashioned, back in the days, like tablet, right? Of made out of stone, right? And he's getting these stone tablets and he's like, hey people, this is what God wants you to understand and wh what God wants from your life. He says, remember the time when you were a slave in Egypt? Don't ever become like that ever again. But then even though you are physically free, there's a pretty good chance you might actually become spiritually or even emotionally back into slavery because you're going after things in this world that you should not belong in your life. So point number one God says is what? To have no other gods in your life, but only but me. But guess what? When you are a people pleaser, you have, like I said, little gods all over your life that you're trying to please. You believe in polytheism, meaning you believe in many, many gods. And I'm telling you right now, there's only one true God, and that's Lord Jesus Christ. And if you can please God, that's the whole point of your whole life. But the people of Israel, they knew because they were leaving a land of Egypt that had many, many gods. Do you understand all of the, the, the 10 plagues that, that, uh, that God just destroys? Those were all the different gods in the land of Egypt. If you ever go through it, run through the, the 10 plagues, go back through it and study it. And if you study it, all of those things were God just saying like, I'm just destroying this God, I'm destroying this God, I'm destroying that God. And then people of Egypt are like, oh, what's going on? Moses, you're just destroying all of our gods. And Moses is like, that's exactly my point because I serve the true and living God. You guys follow the false God, right? And so and as that's happening, <sighs> Look at what it says at the end of this passage, right? It says that God is a jealous God visiting the sins of the fathers of the children in the third and fourth generations of those who hate me. That means that there is a generational, generational, generational curse that is being passed down because they hated God. Meaning that there's something in their life that they're saying, hey, I'm God. I'm God over it. I'm God where I'm taking over that part. Guys, whatever your sin struggle is, guys, listen to me very clearly. This is my, this is my, my final point. Whatever your sin struggle is, 
That's your God. Because you're not willing to let go of it. And some of you are like, what are you talking about, Shay? What are you talking about? I, I, know that the, the, I know those simple ones that we always talk about, right? Sex, drugs, and rock and roll, right? Sex, drugs, and they say uh, drinking too, whatever it might be. But back in the days, sex, drugs, and rock and roll, right? Those are your gods. Those are the ones that you cannot let go of. Because you're saying that, God, I, I, I want to take care of that. I want that in my life. When you're saying, I want that God in my life, you're basically saying exactly what the passage is saying is that, hey God, I hate you because I love myself too much. Does that make sense? Like you hate God. I know you're not gonna say I hate God, but think about this really clearly. If you're placing someone else or something else above God, then you're saying your love for God is below what you place above God. Let me be more clear. When you say, I hate when you place that idol in your life and you're not willing to let go of it, your idol, you love it so much that compared to God, it looks like you hate God. That's what the Bible's saying. And when you do that, guess what happens? You pass that down, not to just your life, but you pass that down to your kids' generation, to your kids' generation, to your kids' generation, to your kids' generation. And that generational curse that we talked about, or I've, I've talked about before, is gonna continue to be passed down. Why? Because you're choosing to live your life in a way where you are God and you're accepting that part of your life and you want that more than anything else and you don't care. You don't care about your kids. You don't care about your kids' kids. You only care about your own pleasure. And that's what God is saying. He's saying, you shall have no other gods before me. God is saying, I'm the true God. I'm the true and living God. But for some of us, we're like, okay, I hear you, God, but in actuality, God, you don't know what you're talking about because I have control over it. And I would say to you, if you're doing that, you're deceiving yourself. And at the end of it, you know how this message is about freedom from people pleasing? You're just pleasing yourself. And now you've become God. My brothers and sisters, this is, the, this is God's word. God's word is so good, right, isn't it? When you do a simple Bible study, isn't it so good? Because what is God saying? God is saying that I want, when it says also look at, when you say God, it says I am a jealous God. I know we think like jealousy, isn't that a sin? Doesn't jealousy sound really bad? No, God is trying to express to us how much he wants us. Like God is saying like I will, I want and I love you so much and I, I wanna be with you and I wanna have that life on life. I wanna live with a purpose with you so much so that everything else pales in comparison and I'm just jealous of wanting to be with you. That's what God is saying. Because when we look at certain words, we always think like, oh, jealousy must be negative, must be really bad. No, no, no. God is trying to express his love and passion for us in such a way that we would understand it in our human ways. Because if God, if God were to like open up our brains and like give us his knowledge, it would, our, our brains would, like it would be like a, a 40 caliber, like, you know what I mean? Like, it would just like, it will be over. Like, you couldn't understand what God is trying to say. But God is bringing his, God is condescending himself to our level so that we understand like our level of jealousy. Well, when you think of jealousy, what do you think of? You think of a strong emotion. You think of a passionate emotion, emotion. You think of jealousy in a way where nothing else can get in the way, like I want that. That's exactly the image of like when we see of the one sheep going astray of the hundred, right? And then God says, I will pursue that sheep. That's the word that God is trying to express to us so that we understand the passion that God is wanting to like pursue us with because he loves us that much. Amen? So more than people pleasing, more than pleasing ourselves, can we, pray, can we please our God, give praise to our God, and live for him? Amen? All right, amen. Oh, I'm exhausted. All right, let's go. <laughs> let's pray. Let's pray, guys. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much. God, we thank you for 
this Sunday, God, this Palm Sunday, God, where we are celebrating and preparing ourselves, God, for Easter Sunday, the Resurrection Sunday, where we can come together and celebrate, God, the wonderful work that you have done for us on the cross. God, as we look to a Good Friday uh, this week, as we look to the moment that you were crucified on the cross for all of our sins, the pain and the sacrifice that you went through for us. How can we not thank you? How can we not praise you and give you all the praise and give you all the glory? God, this morning, would you forgive us for many of us here that have placed other things in our life above you? God, would you help us this morning to surrender those things, God, to you so that, God, we can live our lives praising you and, God, pleasing you. God, we thank you. We love you. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen.
righteousness, O oh God, how I need you. All right, church. Uh, before I close uh, in prayer, I, I remember um, I remember my boys when they were really, really tiny and young. Um, and I think as parents, you've heard this uh, like a lot of times where kids will say, like, like, Dad, Dad, look at me, look at me, look at me. And of course, we would look at them, and they would just, you know, do something silly, and they would just make us always laugh and be like, oh, right? And um, as they grow up, obviously, they do less and less of that. Yeah, but I think at times, if we can live our lives in that kind of a funny way where instead of looking to people to say, hey, hey, look at me, look at me, um, that we can look to God and say, God, I'm with a mindset like, God, I'm doing this, and I'm serving you. I'm loving the people that you've called me to love. And I hope you see me. And I promise you, God is seeing you. I promise you, God is looking down upon you with eyes of just admiration and love because he loves it. He loves it when his children are walking with him. He loves it when his children are doing what God, our God, wants us to do. So this week, you know, having that mindset that God is looking, not at you for what you do wrong, but at times where you're doing something for him, that I know that our God, he's so pleased by it. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, God, this, this morning for us to worship you and give praise to you and for us to learn more about you and to understand that we should have no other gods before you and that you are the true and living God. God, I pray that that message would seep into us. God, it would, it would wreck us, God, in ways where we have to wrestle with it and try to understand it and try to make sense of it. That, God, you are the God that has created everything in this world and for us to enjoy that and for us to even enjoy you. And so, God, I pray that this week as we leave this place, God, that we can do exactly that, where we can enjoy, God, your creation and what you have given to us in our life. God, even the relationships that we have even in this place, God, you've given it all to us because, God, you love us so much. And so help us, God, to live our lives not pleasing man, but, God, pleasing you. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, in the communion and power and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Sun is shining down on me, birds are singing praise, I'm about to have a good day, in every single way, God made the universe, knows me by my name, so it's a good day.